First, Climate Central's Climate Shift Index finds that as temperatures continue to rise to 102 in Austin by Thursday, man-made climate change is making this heat five times more likely than it would otherwise be. Joining us today is Dr. Daniel Guilford, an MIT climate scientist with Climate Central. Dr. Guilford, thank you so much for your time. Tell us first how this new climate change attribution system that you guys developed really works. Yeah, so the Climate Shift Index uh, is a tool that helps us discover the fingerprints of climate change on our day-to-day uh, -day weather. We kind of imagine that all of the temperatures that we are experiencing fall into a single bucket. And in that bucket, there might be warmer days or there might be colder days. On average, it's kind of somewhere in the middle. Um, but that bucket has changed its shape over the years. Over the last 100 years, that bucket has gotten a lot warmer. All the temperatures inside that bu uh, bucket have gotten warmer by a degree or two. So when you reach in that bucket and you pull out a temperature for what today's weather is going to be, on average, it's going to be quite a bit warmer than it was, say, 100 years ago. Now, we use models and weather uh, observations for the past 100 years to put together and figure out what these buckets look like to figure out, OK, if we have a weather, uh, we have a, a day like today where we're seeing the temperatures, what they are, how much of what we are seeing in our, uh, would we expect uh, in a climate that hasn't been influenced by human beings and how much of what we are seeing would we expect in a climate that has been influenced by human beings. So the Climate Shift Index tries to put a number on how much we expect. Right, and later this week, Dr. Guilford, the Climate Shift Index for Austin is a five out of five, which by your definition, that means, quote, this is an exceptional event driven by climate change. How are we able to say so confidently that climate change is responsible for the Texas heat this week? Simply put, the types of temperatures that we're seeing this week were, are extremely unlikely to happen in a, in a, in a world without climate change. Human-caused climate change increases the thickness of the blanket around our planet and traps heat more effectively down near the surface where we as human beings live. That trapped heat means more heat that we are experiencing in our bodies. And of course, because human beings have been emitting greenhouse gases, the temperatures of the atmosphere at large have been getting warmer. And we know that these temperatures that we're experiencing over the next few days in Austin, they would not have occurred in a world without climate change. They just simply weren't likely to happen because it wasn't that warm yet. Sure, and a common question that we get from viewers, maybe somebody watching is curious as well. Austin is growing so rapidly. They say, couldn't some of this just be the increased urbanization, all the concrete that we're pouring, making temperatures hotter? What have your studies found regarding how much of this is an increase in what we call the urban heat island effect versus how much Absolutely. is climate change? Yeah, so the urban heat island effect does play a big role, especially in Austin. We're definitely seeing increased temperatures, especially within the city limits. Um, that are related to human activities, just more bodies being in the same place, uh, higher levels of concrete and asphalt that are able to gather that heat and trap it more effectively. But climate change is happening everywhere all around the world just because it's a little bit warmer in Austin because of this urban heat island effect doesn't mean that climate change is playing a role. In fact, once we take out that urban heat island effect from our models, we still see a climate impact very substantially Climate change is here. It's happening in Austin right now, and the temperatures over the next few days are going to show us that. So basically, the urban heat island means Austin is warmer than the surrounding areas, but everybody is warming up at the same time. Now, That's before right. we let you go, people can sometimes feel kind of overwhelmed by this big problem of climate change, especially in a week like this where we're just at the mercy of the heat here in central yeah. Texas. What do you recommend is the best way for those who want to do something about changing our course in the future? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, climate change is a collective problem that requires collective solutions. The most important thing that I believe we can do about climate change is to talk about it with our neighbors, talk about it with our friends, with our family, uh, with the people we meet at our local cafe or our health club or our faith-based community. It's really important that we talk about climate change, normalize talking about climate change because it is here. It is affecting our weather tomorrow, the next day. And the sooner we are talking about it and thinking together on the solutions that we're gonna be best for our society and for the people around us to show empathy <laughs> towards others and to work towards solutions that think about that. But the most important way that we can get that ball rolling down the hill is to talk with each other about it. Dr. Guilford, climate scientist with Climate Central, thank you so much for your time today. 